Here are five tips that'll help you dominate weak and short forehands better than you ever have before. Now, this video is courtesy of 12KGP Tennis on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to their awesome channel. I've put their link in the description below. So let's watch this short point, and then we're going to diagram this forehand. Now, here we have Emil Ruzavari. This is Gofan, and this is just some practice points that they're playing. Big serve by Emil Ruzavari, and he gets a weak return. Now, tip number one, when you get a weak forehand that you get to come in and hopefully just get to crush it and try to win this point, the first idea you want to know is that you are planning on making contact with this ball above net level. As simple as that is, many recreational players allow this ball to bounce up and then they let it drop, you know, sometimes down to like knee level by the time they contact that ball and then they got to lift it up and they lose all advantage uh, over this shot. So please, the first idea is you are planning on making contact with this ball above net level. That's tip number one. Now, tip two, one of the biggest mistakes I see players make when it comes to where they stand in this situation is they get too close to the ball. And let me explain why. The distance you stand away from a ball varies based on the height of that ball. See, your arm is a radius, right? So here's the circle and here's the radius of your arm. So as your arm drops, it gets closer to your body. As your arm rises, it gets more above you. See, this radius goes like this. You know, if we just take it all the way around, all of a sudden it looks like a, a wagon wheel, right? So as you contact higher, you also need to contact farther away from you. Remember, we're playing this ball above net level. So if you're playing this ball at shoulder level, if you're playing it at head level, either one, you have to stand far away from the ball. So you need to stand, if you're right-handed, way to the left of this ball. If I draw a line along Ruzavari's right side, so that's the right side of his body, if I take the average recreational player playing the same ball, if they're right-handed, they'll stand here. This is their, their body, right? That's their chest, and this is their hips, and this is their thigh, and this is their knee. They stand way too close to the ball. What does that mean? Instead of their arm being extended at contact, their arm is all shriveled up and jammed. If you're someone who on short balls tends to feel very jammed and very cramped up when you're striking the ball, it's because you're standing the same distance away from that ball as if it's a low ball. The lower the ball, the closer you play that ball to your body. You don't play it close to your body. That's a relative statement. It's relative to a ball that's at head level, right? You play it a little bit closer to the body. Another way to say that is when you play the ball at head level, that's the ball that you play the farthest away. So make sure that you are adjusting your feet. You can see he's adjusting his feet. He's keeping the racket in front of him, not committing to the backswing yet. Left hand still on the racket. He's adjusting his feet, but he's not getting super close to the ball. He's staying away from this ball so he's not jammed. When you're jammed, you tend to always have to hit this ball cross court. When you're far away, you can hit the ball either down the line or cross court. You actually have options. So stay away from a ball that you're going to play around shoulder level, head level. Here's the next idea. You want to play this ball in an open stance. You can actually see when he's adjusting, he's actually staying in an open stance. Watch this. Here he's in an open stance, open stance, open stance. He's getting in an open stance early and he's adjusting with small steps, one to not get too close to the ball, but just to keep that open stance. One easy way to know if you should use an open stance or a closed stance is the height of contact. When you are playing a ball that is high, typically you are going to use an open stance. What is an open stance? Your left foot is on the left and your right foot is on the right. That's the definition of an open stance. His left foot is on the left and his right foot is on the right. He's in an open stance. So open stance allows for very easy hip and shoulder turn. When you are playing a ball around head level, shoulder level, it requires a lot of chest rotation. In fact, we'll see where his body is facing prior to contact. 
Watch where his chest is facing after he hits this ball. His chest is facing off to the left. On this ball, he's got 180 degrees of body rotation. He is going to do that very easily in an open stance. If he were to try a closed stance in this, it's going to be nearly impossible for him to get the rotation that he's looking for. So use an open stance makes it much easier to play a ball that is around shoulder level, head level. Here's the fourth idea. You want to turn higher than you normally do with your hand, your hitting hand. Let's look where his hitting hand is right now. If I just go straight across, let me draw, use a color that's not the same as, as his shirt. There you go. So his hand, you can see, is a little bit higher than shoulder level. Well, let's actually go earlier in a point, the, the point before. Look at this forehand. Look how his hand is the same height as his shoulder, right? Hand is same height as a shoulder. Well, let's look at his contact point. Contact point is more chest level. Now we go to this short forehand and he's playing this ball kind of at the top of his head. He's playing this ball near the top of his head. And where was his hand? His hitting hand is slightly higher than his shoulder. See, the height of your backswing can actually mimic the height of your contact. I watch many recreational players make the mistake of taking the racket low and then they're going to contact the ball high. It's way too steep of an upward incline to make contact with the ball and they cannot drive the ball. So to help you drive a higher ball at contact, simply turn higher. Then when you drop your racket, it doesn't drop as far down below. And you can see his hand is really going up as the racket head drops. His, his hand is not going down. His hand's actually driving forward and up to this ball. But when the racket drops, now it's only a little bit below ball height. And what does that mean? He can drive up into the ball. If he turns at the same height uh, or even lower than he normally would in this situation. Then when he drops the racket, it's too far below and it's too much of an upward swing and he's going to get too much spin and not enough drive. So turn high on a higher contact ball. And the last thing, when you hit this ball, and there are many things that we could talk about, but then the video would be 30 minutes long. But here is the last thing I'm going to tell you. When you play a ball that is above net level, you can see that he's only a few feet behind the service line. There is no need to lift this ball, and there is no need to hit this ball down. You do not want this ball to go up off your racket. You do not want this ball to go down off your racket. The moment the ball leaves your racket, it should be going directly forward and then let gravity bring it down. He hits this ball forward and then gravity and topspin bring it down. I watch players. They do this all the time. They either lift the ball and then the ball lands long because the court is too short from up here. Or they think they've got to help gravity and topspin and they drive it down into the bottom of the net. You want the ball to go forward off the racket. Let me ask you, if you roll a ball, let me draw a table, right? So here's a table, right? That's a really bad table. But let me put a, a ball on, a, on this table. Give me one second. There we go. Here's a ball, right? And you roll the ball this way. Well, when the ball leaves the table, does it go like this as it leaves the table? No. The moment it leaves the table, it starts dropping, right? The moment it rolls off the table, it immediately starts arcing down. That's going to be the same thing that happens with this ball. You're going to hit the ball forward and it's immediately going to begin dropping, especially if you have topspin. Remember, he drops slightly below this ball and he's going up through the contact. So he's getting topspin on this ball, a little bit of side spin, but mostly topspin on this ball. So you don't need to drive this ball down and you certainly don't need to lift this ball. Now, the best way to practice these techniques is at home with a Topspin Pro. You can get a Topspin Pro using my link in the description. I'm also going to pin it in the first comment. I absolutely love the Topspin Pro, and I know you will too. And if you're looking for people in your local area to play matches against or practice with, or if you want to find a coach who's close to you who can help you with your game, use my link in the description and pinned in the first comment. Playercourt.com slash 2-Minute Tennis. When you use my link to sign up, you get 50% off. 
So when you get a weak, short forehand, this is what you do. First, plan on making contact with this ball above net level. So what does that mean? You've got to stay farther away from the ball than you typically do so that you don't jam yourself. You want to make sure that you use an open stance because when you play a ball that's high, it's important to use the open stance to allow your body to rotate. A closed stance can inhibit that shoulder and hip turn. You want to make sure that you turn higher than you normally do so that when you drop the rack, it slightly you can drive into the ball and don't lift the ball and don't hit the ball down you're planning on hitting this ball straight forward off your racket with topspin so follow these ideas and there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence win more matches and play much better tennis this is ryan reedy from two minute tennis.net you got this